But I just believe that coming into this new year, we also I also told the board and the congregation that we're going to give more this year to missions. So we broke a record in missions this year in a pandemic because I just Amazing. believe that we are, God is not in a box of our system. No, sir. And I think sometimes we like, okay, God, if you'll turn this around, then I'll do this. I believe yes. you miss opportunities, you miss development strategies, you miss acts of kindness when you wait for storms to pass. Yes. You know, the, one, because, of the, one of the strategies of the devil, one of the strategies of the devil is to get us onto his territory, onto his ground. I absolutely. will never, ever, if I'm going to face Mike Tyson, I know one place I'm never going to face him. I'm not right. going to go in that boxing room with Mike Tyson. I'll face him outside and talk to him and deal with him. But I'm, I'm not going to go in the, into the ring. And a lot of times we tend to think that we've got to, you know, we've got to go into the ring with the devil. I've got news for you. There's more ways to fight the devil than, than face him face to face. We can, we can destroy him by the word of our testimony. And what you're Absolutely. doing by caring and reaching and loving outside in a pandemic when everybody else is running for the hills, that's the time for the church to stand up and say, we're here and we're still alive yeah. and we still love you and God is still on the throne. And the impact of the church at that point is infinitely bigger than when everything's hunky-dory and we're sailing along singing a happy song. Absolutely. And I, I, with the team, and I was telling some people the other day, one of my favorite quotes by Peter Drucker is, you can never predict the future. You can only create it. And I said, so are we going to just hope this changes? Are we going to make mm -hmm. some change? One thing, I was very clear in the very beginning of this. Um, I mean, we, we've been in this community. This is an 81-year-old church, and we've been in this community, and we've had a solid relationship. And as a pastor, I know many are watching, There was we were in a no-win situation. If we open, we're in trouble. We close, you know, we've forsaken our faith. We're, we're going to hell. You know, all that. I was getting blasted by, and all, every pastor on. I mean, none of us had it easy. You couldn't win. But I told our community, I said, long after all this does go away, our reputation matters because we are a solution-providing church. We are not a problem-causing church. And so, again, it just comes down to when I was, the Lord said, now what? And I just started penciling out some things and writing some things out. And I, and I told the team, and I want to encourage pastors and leaders and whoever's watching, turbulence is inevitable you know it's going to always be there in fact if you if you have if you want to make a change you, you do it now hope we have to hope to influence the future now not next year right Ooh, instability is going to be with us. in fact if you read revelation which just before i came on i'm preparing tonight because i'm on wednesday nights we do a teaching and i'm in the seven churches of revelation and uh, turbulence is inevitable. The Bible says yeah. that. In fact, it's going to get greater before the coming of the Lord, the second coming of the Lord. That's so I, we're always going to face unpredictability. We're always going to face vol volatility, right? So we, we either rise to the challenges or we're going to hide every time the wind howls. So what are we going to do? Are we just going to rise to this? So I told the team, and I, I'm telling pastors all the time, this is our season. This is the greatest day to preach the gospel, the greatest yes, day to love people, Absolutely. the greatest day to solve problems. Let's make, you know, again, one of the biggest things is our leadership reflects who we are. It really does. It's it's who we are. So if we're a leader that blames COVID, or blames governors, I mean, I got pastor friends that are blaming governors. Now we're going to blame a new president or we blame the former president for everything. So leaders that do that, to me, they're like big, big adults and big diapers. That's how I call them. They're just sure. because yeah. Brian Absolutely. Tracy said this. He said, you become an adult the moment you learn to take responsibility. And I think as leaders, we need to say, OK, this is our moment. Yeah. And if I'm going to wait for COVID to leave, well, come on, we need to let's let's evolve. Let's pivot. The gospel doesn't change. But how we no, do sir. it, I tell it all the time. Let's let's date the model, but let's marry the mission. The mission doesn't change. How we do things have to change. <laughs> And so there's a lot of guys right now that are pastoring that are refusing to do online. They're, they're into this conspiracy that, oh, man, they're going to censor us. I mean, this is the greatest time. There, are, In fact, if you if you go back, some of the number one Google searches were prayer and how to read the Bible. The, the people are hungry. The country is hungry. They're divided right now. They're instable. They're 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 going on the mental games that are happening. This is the time to release peace and release joy. And we have the greatest gospel. We have the gospel. We have the yes, greatest sir. opportunity to reach more people, to heal the sick, to see all the great things happen. We just got to learn just to evolve and move with it. You know what I'm saying? And Or we can just hide in our basements and maybe it'll go away.
you know? Well, it's, it's not going away. I, my personal opinion is that this COVID thing is going to be a cyclical thing into the sure. foreseeable future because it, it has the sure. tendency to be able to mutate. But it, you're, you're absolutely right. If you're watching today and you're a pastor or you're just a, a lay person and you're wondering you know, what the future holds, you can create the future. You can make the future. Absolutely. You don't have to sit back and be a victim of fate. I believe that God has given fate in my hands. And if, if, I, were to wait, if I were to wait for favorable times to do something, Every mission project that I've ever done in my life, every time I've started, I've started with no money at the worst time. And if I allowed my circumstance to dictate my beginnings, I would never begin. But something happens in your soul. Something happens. Steel is put inside you that you look at your circumstance and, and you have that God-given confidence. It, it can only come from God because you can't figure yeah. it out yourself. And something inside you says, I am going to change this circumstance. And the moment you do that, God gets off the throne. Angels start uh, marshalling supplies for your behalf. 